Images associated with Canada typically include moose, maple syrup, and good manners. So hearing about Canadian serial killers comes as a big surprise. But the country certainly has its fair share, even today. In January 2018, news broke that a Toronto man buried victims' bodies in flower pots. As crazy as that sounds, it's just the tip of the iceberg. These Bruce MacArthur murder facts reveal a disturbing story with a high body count. For the last few years, people in Toronto's LGTBQ community have warned police that there's a serial killer stalking the streets, but no one paid attention. Out of all the places serial killers hide bodies, flower pots on the properties of other people's homes has to be one of the eeriest. MacArthur was a landscaper, which gave him the perfect opportunity to covertly hide corpses. He was able to dispose of bodies where no one would ever think to look. Now, Toronto police are digging up half the city, terrified of the horrors they'll discover right in people's backyards. On February 8, 2018, while conducting an extensive search of a property MacArthur used as storage in exchange for landscaping services, Toronto police found the remains of six people hidden in planters. MacArthur had been charged with the killing of five men even before the bodies were discovered. At the time, Detective Sergeant Hank Itzinger said that at least some of the remains belonged to Andrew Kinsman, one of the victims whom MacArthur has been charged with murdering. Since the initial discovery, eight total victims have been identified as Selly Mazin, Majid Kayan, Andrew Kinsman, Dean Lisowick, Sarush Mahmoudi, Skandaraj Navaratnam, Abdulbasir Faizi, and Karushna Kumar Kanagaratnam. Why can't this guy kill people with easier names to pronounce? On January 18, 2018, the police were staking out Bruce MacArthur's home when they were faced with a life-or-death situation. When MacArthur returned home one night with a man, they became concerned that he could be MacArthur's next victim and decided to act. They kicked in the killer's door, and inside they discovered the man tied to MacArthur's bed. The Toronto PD is unsure if MacArthur was planning to kill him or if the two were meeting consensually. They initially questioned MacArthur because he once dated Skandaraj Navaratnam, who was one of his victims. The planters where police found six sets of remains were on the property of a family he'd known for ten years. They'd apparently worked out an arrangement where he could store his equipment in their shed, and in return he would cut them a deal on landscaping work. The patriarch of the family, Mr. Bisson, claims that the planters where the police discovered the remains were installed in 2008 after a flood. He told The Independent, he was around after that with planters, not rocky ones, but big plastic, dark black planters. Bruce MacArthur had profiles on Manjam, Silver Daddies, and Recon. In all of his profiles, he used some variation of the username, Silverfox. On his Recon profile, which is a fetish dating site, he asked to be contacted by submissive men of all ages. Toronto police say that two of MacArthur's victims, Andrew Kinsman and Selly Mazin, were known to frequent a section of town known as The Village, in the middle of the gay community in Toronto. MacArthur could have met them through an app or by cruising, which he allegedly did frequently. A chilling quote taken from MacArthur's profile on Silver Daddies speaks to the deception he used to trap his victims. I can be a bit shy until I get to know you, but I'm a romantic at heart. One man said MacArthur approached him on a gay dating app and told him he was into asphyxiation and wanted to spank him until he cried and begged him to stop. Sasha Reed, a PhD student in applied psychology who researches serial killers, found evidence of one in Toronto's gay village the summer before MacArthur was caught. She built a database of unsolved murders and missing people in Canada, and she noticed a cluster of missing men around the area MacArthur used to frequent, which confirmed the concerns of the LGBTQ community. She called the police, and the detective listened politely to her research, but never got back to her. One of the most unsettling details about MacArthur's life is that when he wasn't murdering gay men and burying their remains in flower pots, he worked a seasonal job as Santa Claus in a Toronto mall. After the news broke about his crimes, the company that hired him was quick to issue a statement saying that there had never been any complaints against MacArthur during his tenure as St. Nick. The statement reads, There were no reported incidents by customers or by store and mall employees during his time at the mall. When news of MacArthur's murders hit the web, Toronto's LGTBQ scene spoke out, saying that they've been warning the local police about a serial killer in their community for months. After two of MacArthur's victims, Selly Mazin and Andrew Kinsman went missing, Toronto police essentially said that there was nothing they could do.
As the MacArthur story unfolds, it's apparent that there's not a mouth big enough for the foot that has to be inserted by the Toronto PD. There's no way to know how many lives could have been saved had they investigated just one of the missing persons cases reported. Toronto Police Chief Mark Saunders said that the force is going to take this horrible series of crimes as an opportunity to learn, grow and develop. As in the case of fellow Canadian serial killer Robert Picton, Bruce MacArthur probably killed far more people than we're aware. Many long-term serial killers rack up a large number of victims over a period of time until they're discovered, as is also the case with killers like Picton or Dean Call. Detective Itzinger, with the Toronto PD said that MacArthur has taken some steps to cover his tracks, and that there are likely many more victims left to uncover. He ended his chilling statement by saying, I have absolutely no idea how many more there are going to be. After discovering the remains of six of Bruce MacArthur's victims in and around a property that he worked on as a landscaper, police began to search the nearby ravine. They were eventually able to recover eight victims in total, all of which are connected to MacArthur. It's possible that MacArthur was fertilizing lawns with corpses for years without anyone realizing. He presented himself as a lovable bear, a community-minded volunteer Santa, and a gruff jerk who worked on lawns. According to Gary Speedy, a landscaper who worked with MacArthur, the killer was kind of mean. Speedy told CNN, he was always opinionated. Never got any warm, friendly vibes from him. He seemed moody, usually fairly happy, but sometimes quiet. The last time Speedy saw MacArthur was 12 years before the arrest, when he went to MacArthur's place for Christmas. Now that the Toronto police know MacArthur has been operating in and around the area for decades, they're trying to see if they can find a connection between the killer and any missing persons reports. According to Time there are hundreds of missing person cases that fit MacArthur's MO, both in Canada and overseas. Detective Itzinger with the Toronto PD said that because MacArthur travelled extensively, their probe grows every day. He stated, it is getting bigger and we are getting more resources as we go along, so it is going to be a very, very extensive investigation. Like many serial killers, Bruce MacArthur kept trophies of his victims. But rather than preserving body parts or holding onto material things, he took a more 21st century approach. According to Global News, when police searched the killer's home they found photos of his victims on his computer. February in Toronto is unforgivingly cold. During the day, temperatures only reach highs in the low 40s, and at night they dip well below freezing. They're not ideal for investigators attempting to dig up human remains. In order to keep the ground from freezing solid they used heaters to thaw out the property. Rather than dig up an entire yard, they've started using ground-penetrating sonar and cadaver dogs to locate anything that could be of interest. Unfortunately the cadaver dogs grew tired, and more dogs were brought in from other precincts. Toronto Police spokesperson Megan Gray told Global News, the dogs really do need to rest their noses. They get less effective the more they work. In January 2019, the 67-year-old Bruce MacArthur pled guilty to the slaying of Selly Mazin, Andrew Kinsman, Majid Kayan, Dean Lissowick, Sarush Mahmoudi, Skandaraj Navaratnam, Abdulbasir Faizi, and Karushna Kumar Kanagaratnam, according to the Washington Post. He will serve either eight sentences concurrently or consecutively, determining whether or not he can apply for parole after 25 years. Each of his victims are between the ages of 37 and 60. The Toronto LGBTQ community expressed their relief in the closure they gained from MacArthur's guilty plea. If you enjoyed this video hit the like button and also, consider subscribing for more videos like this.